This is the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, and this is the OC Ghost Dream Deck. These are direct competitors, but in this video, they're going to be companions and work together. Let's get into it. My name is Patrick and this is Everyday Tech. Everyday Tech for Everyday People. In this video, we're going to be combining the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro and the OC Ghost Stream Deck into one large video switcher, giving us a total of seven inputs. This is going to be made possible by using the BitFocus companion software. Now, if you don't know, the A10 Mini Pro and the Ghost Stream Deck are video switchers, both with four HDMI inputs. Both have their pluses and minuses, but this is not a comparison video. I will be doing a head-to-head -head battle between these two switchers in the near future, so stay subscribed for that. Before I get into the setup, let me answer the question, why do this? Both the A10 Mini and the Ghost Stream have their strengths. This is one way to get the best of both worlds. I'll touch on some of the strengths later on in this video, but of course I'll do a more deep dive when I do a head-to-head -head comparison video in the near future. If you need more than four video inputs and you want to save a little bit more money, or you already have one of these switchers and you need to expand, this is a relatively cheaper way to do it. I will say if you are starting from scratch and can afford to spend a little bit extra money, or especially if you're using this in a production environment, I would go ahead and get the A10 Mini Extreme with eight video inputs and most of the features that both of these have already. Now full disclosure, I did buy the A10 Mini Pro with my own money and then OC did provide me with the Ghost Stream deck later on to do a review video. I've done a number of videos on both of these devices, so check that out on my channel. Both of these devices here have four HDMI inputs, but when we combine the two together, we have a total of seven. Now, the reason why we lose one input is the output of one switcher needs to go into the input of the other, so we lose one input. One of the devices has to be the main device taking care of the main output, either by being connected to your computer via HDMI streaming to a service directly, or using the HDMI output of the device itself. In this setup, I'm gonna be making the GoStream deck the main and the A10 Mini Pro as the add-on connected into one of the HDMI inputs of the GoStream deck. There are a few reasons why I'm using the GoStream as the main device. This goes back to the strengths of both devices. One of the big features that the GoStream has over the A10 is SuperSource. The other feature it does have over the A10 Mini Pro is two HDMI outputs. Let's say I'm doing a hybrid event or an in-person event, and I need to show something on a screen in the in-person portion of the event. I can utilize one of the HDMI outputs to share whatever I need to on that screen, and then still utilize the other HDMI output for multi-view. Now, there is one main reason why I would use the A10 Mini Pro as the main device over the Ghost Stream, is that I really like the recording feature on the A10 Mini Pro better than the Ghost Stream. Last crucial thing for this setup is that you need to make sure that you have both of these devices connected to your network via the ethernet ports on the devices. Now this is where I might lose some of you because you may not have your router nearby, but this is where something like a travel router might come in handy. Here we are in Companion. This is version 3.2.2. I'm not gonna go through how to install Companion. It's just a very straightforward process like any other application, but we need to have our two connections to our two devices. Now our GoStream Deck and our E10 Mini Pro are connected to the network via the ethernet cable. And this computer that Companion is running on is on the same network as well. Now, whatever device that Companion is running on, let's say you install it on a Raspberry Pi, that device just needs to be on the same network as the devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the A10 Mini first type in ATEM, we're going to click add. Now, when we go into the configuration, we can either put the IP address of the ATEM Mini Pro or just search for it because it's on the same network, it should find it. Then I'm going to hit save. And now we have our connection. Now we're going to use the GoStream deck. I'm going to type in GoStream. I see it here in my list because I've installed the plugin and put it in the right directory. So if you don't do that, it won't show up here. So you need to download the plugin, the companion plugin or companion module, and then put it in the right folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you on my Mac on where to do that. Here we are in Finder and you need to go to the applications folder. You need to find the companion app. 
you need to right click it and say show package content. And then now we're within the companion app and let's navigate to the folder contents, resources, and then search for bundled modules. And then after you unzip or unpack that GoStream module, you just have to put that folder that you unpacked and put it into this bundled module folder. And that's pretty much it. And then if you already have companion open, you need a quick companion and then just reopen it. And it should show in our list of connections. But now that we have that module added, we can now go ahead and add our GoStream connection here. And then we need to look for our GoStream deck. So I already have, I already know where it is on mine. You need to look it up on your GoStream or either through the GoStream app. I know mine is at 10.00.221 and it worked. I have a check mark here and now we're ready to go. Now that we have all our connections set up, let's set up our buttons. This portion of the demo will all be in companion. We're going to set up our buttons first, but after we set up our buttons, I'll show you this in action by showing you the lights changing on the switchers themselves and then do a little demo if I can find seven different inputs. So let's go ahead and set up our buttons now. I'm going to collapse this left column to give us a little bit more room. Go into the buttons tab here. We are going to be using all seven columns per row here. Remember our ghost stream is our main device. So slots one, two, and three will be HDMI one, HDMI two, HDMI three on the ghost stream. And then our 810 mini pro, this will be camera one, camera two, camera three, camera four. This first row here will be jump cuts between the different inputs. And then we're going to do an auto transition, pretty much a fade in this second row here. As you can see on the right side here, we do have some presets that we're going to use. We're going to go ahead and start setting up the jump cuts for the GoStream first. So let's go into the GoStream deck under program. We can drag and drop the input one into this slot here. Now I can go ahead and drag and drop input two and input three and four into these slots, but I wanna go ahead and edit this button first. There are some limitations that either it's on my side that I don't know how to do or on companion side, but I wanna go ahead and go into the feedbacks tab here. And what this is saying is if input one is selected, then go ahead and make that a green background and white text, which is fine if I'm only using the ghost stream, but once we start switching to the A10 Mini Pro go, uh, inputs, it's gonna get a little bit more confusing. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail right now, but I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of the feedback. And now we have the buttons the way we want it. So now that I have it the way I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this button and put it there. And let's go ahead and edit this to input two. Make sure this is going into input two on the ghost stream. We're gonna go ahead and copy this input two and do the same thing for input three. And then we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna go into input four. But remember, input four is basically camera one on our A10 Mini Pro. So what we need to do is add another action here. And we're gonna go set input. I already have it as my recently used, but you can also search for it. Set the program input to camera one. And then we can go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna make this five. And then our ATEM should be on camera two. Remember, this needs to switch to input four on our ghost stream. And this needs to be camera two on our A10 Mini Pro, and we're gonna do the same thing for these buttons here. This will be more clear as we go into the demo portion of things. So let me, let me just finish this off here. We have one more. Remember, we're having a total of seven inputs here. And now we have that all set. So let's see this a little bit in action here. Let's go into our web buttons here. And I'm going to show you the uh, switchers themselves. So now that we have our companion on top and the switchers on bottom, when I switch from input one, two, and three, you'll see it one, two, and three switching on the ghost stream itself. When I go into four, 
it switches to input four there, but it switches to input one on the ATEM. And as I go five, six, seven, you'll see that it changes. If I go to input one, it switches to input one on there. But if I go back to input, let's say five, it should switch to input four there and then input two there. And that's what it does. And a brief like, explanation is remember, the ATEM output, the HDMI output is feeding into input four. So anytime we use one of these cameras, we need to switch that to four. And so that's why we lose one input on the ghost stream itself. Let's now work on the changing of inputs with the transition. So let's go back into our presets, go into our ghost stream, and we're gonna go into preview, and we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop setting input one as the preview. Now I'm gonna change this to T1, so we're not confused with our buttons on top. Of course, I could do better naming conventions here. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our feedback like we did in the previous example. Hopefully in the near future, I can figure out a fix for this. But what this button does right now is sets input one as the preview. So we wanna do a number of things. First, we wanna do set the transition style for the ghost stream. So we're gonna set that to mix. That could be set to something else, but we wanna make sure it's set to the style that we want just in case someone presses something on the ghost stream itself. Then we want to add the rate. So the auto transition rate, we can say, search for rate, transition rate. And we're going to set this to the quickest one at 0.5. After that, we can actually perform our actual transition. So let's say transition, perform auto transition. So now we have it set. So basically what we're doing is set input one as the preview, set mix as the style, set the rate of our transition, and then actually perform our action. So let's go ahead and copy this for input one, two, and three. We're gonna set this to T2 and make sure we set our input or preview as input two. We're gonna go ahead and do the same for this one T3, set input three as our preview. And this will now do a uh, auto transition between input one, two, and three. Let's bring in our inputs from our ATEM Mini Pro. It's gonna be the same exact concept as our transitions from input one to three on our ghost stream. So we're gonna have to, of course, transition into input four first and then transition into our ATEM Mini Pro inputs. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy T3, and we're gonna make this T4. Now we're gonna make this camera or input four for our transition, but now we need to do the same things for our A10 Mini. So let's go ahead and add an action. We're gonna say preview. We're gonna set the preview for our A10 to camera one. Now we wanna set the transition style. Let's look for the A10 transition style here select pattern and style, make sure that's a mix. Then we're also gonna change the rate. We're gonna set the rate for our transition rate. And this goes not by how many seconds, because remember up here we had 0.5. This goes by the number of frames. So we're working on a 30 frames per second right now on here. So I'm gonna change this to 15 frames. That'll give us a half a second. And then after that, we're gonna perform the auto transition. So if I search auto, it says perform auto transition. And now we have our inputs set. I'm gonna go ahead and copy T4 through T7, um, changing the label and changing the camera input for the A10 mini and not for the ghost stream itself. So we need to change this to camera two. And so let me go ahead and do this for the rest of the buttons here. So let's see this in action on our switchers themselves. Let's go into our web buttons again, and let's show the switchers. And if I transition from T1 to T3, you can see that it's performing the actual transitions on the ghost stream. If we go into T4, it's gonna switch it to input four here and switch it to camera one on the A10 mini. 
and that's performing as it should be. So everything is working great. Let's put in some camera inputs into our switchers and other inputs, and let's see this in action. So I have four different inputs going into these two switchers. First, I have input one, then I have input two. These are both going into the ghost stream. Then I have input four, which is my OBS right here going into the ATEM Mini, and input five is my iPad Pro here. So let's see this action working with the buttons. Input one, input two, four, and five. I have input three that's open, input six that's open, input seven that's open. You can see there's a little bit of maybe a little flash of glitching. I could put some delays in there to make this work even better and let's show the fading working. So this is a great way to expand from four inputs to three inputs, especially if you already have a four input switcher. This has been more of an exercise and a demo to show you what is possible. Is this practical? It depends on your situation. And if you're in my situation and you already have these devices and you don't want to spend the $1,000 on the ATEM Mini Extreme, this is a great setup. I, as I mentioned before, I am going to do a head-to-head -head comparison video in the near future between these two devices. So stay subscribed for that. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Until the next one, see ya.